You, you quote George Tennant in the book, and you claim that he went back over to Langley with the cream-colored piece of stationery. Did you interview George Tennant while you were writing the book? Well, you know, I've, I've been with George Tennant a long time. I've talked to him many times. I talked to him a lot for the last book. Uh, Tennant um, is a guy who sometimes gets confused. He doesn't remember slam dunk. Uh, he doesn't remember testimony before 9-11. In this case, uh, I went to the participants, the people involved, near Tennant, below around tenant who were the folks moving forward executing the plan they have great memories they always have they keep day books they keep journals and they uh, well it's indisputable it did occur uh, people know it all the way through the chain it popped up on the other end it roiled the global news cycles it clearly was a CIA operation and this is the important part but ordered by the White House but you never and that's why it makes it so up uh, and so tricky you, you, you never asked the DCI you never asked the director of Central intelligence agency point-blank George, did you transport a cream-colored piece of paper to Langley after your meeting at the White House? For a lot of reasons, I went to really reliable sources. And to be frank about it, at this point, George, as reporters in town now, is not the person you call for anything in terms of memory. Even a short time ago, much less five years ago, he doesn't remember wide swaths of almost anything. In this case, we dealt with people handling the situation, who remember with great vividness what George says, what they did, the moment of passage, and down the chain. And that's why the book has such strength, is because you can see clearly oh, it does. that this was an operation and people are quoted fully based on their personal knowledge. It, it, it does, there's no doubt about it. And in reading the book, I have to tell you, in reading all your stuff, I admire all of your stuff, but in reading this book and, and these charges that have laid out here, and because of my background covering like city stuff and everything for years, I can't help but come to the conclusion at the end of this book, this book is basically charging the President of the United States or the Vice President of the United States with being an accessory before the fact to 4,000 murders and more in Iraq. They lied us into war, according to this book. Well, the, the book lays out the evidence step by step, all the way to that point in early January 2003, mind you, this is important, weeks before the President's State of the Union address and a month before Colin Powell goes to the UN, that we are meeting with the Iraqi intelligence chief in a secret location, a back channel. He tells us, hey, there are no WMD, and also here's the mind of Saddam Hussein. Here's why he's not worried. He's worried about the Iranians and being shown he's a toothless tiger. All of this is clear later, demonstrable to the world. We know it well before the war. The head of British intelligence, again on the record, says, you know, the U.S. Uh, was, well, moving forward like a runaway train. This was the British version of let's stop this thing. We don't stop it. We ignore the intelligence chief. We then, of course, have a real problem. We put him into hiding, Mike. Hmm. We pay him $5 million from the U.S. government. We've hidden him for five years. Of course, he still remains the jack of diamonds in Bush's deck of most wanted men. There's a million-dollar reward for this fellow who Bush, and it has really been the smoking gun best kept secret of the United States government, and it's one that shows clearly a lack of faith in the basic principles of democracy in terms of transparency and especially accountability on this most august issue of war. Uh, and that's why, of course, everyone is buying it and reading it, and everybody is, congressional investigators are lining up to say, this is indisputable, the evidence is here, let's get people under oath with subpoenas, and let's finish this. It, the book is actually very hopeful. It says, we need to embrace truth before this era ends, if we're going to move forward cleanly and with vigor, with a kind of moral energy that has been bled away. You talk about 4,000 deaths. Well, the fact is, what the book is about is how over these years, America has lost its moral authority and how people are struggling to get it back okay. now in this year of consent. Ron Suskind, thanks very much. The book is the way of the world. It reads like a novel.